Good morning. This video is all about statistics. So I put together four charts. The first one is about the expenses that we incurred while we were on the TA. And that's broken down by North South Island and the different categories we have. So we'll have a look through that. And then there's three other charts that I put together. Uh, one of them is on the type of lodging that we stayed at. One is on a, where how much rain we had and where it was. And then the final one is a kind of a goofy one. It's just about how often was I able to take a shower on the TA. So uh, these uh, are for you if you're looking at uh, doing the TA in the next year or two. Uh, just some ideas of what you might, uh, might expect. Also some suggestions on where you can save some money and some other ideas that will come up. Okay, so let's have a look at these charts. Okay, this first page here is the expenses from what I spent from uh, October 12th, the day I started, to the 6th of March, the day I finished. Now, there's a little note here. Uh, no expenses before or after the 141 days recorded in this amount. Uh, those non-recorded expenses would be items like any kind of gear that I bought before the hike started, uh, the registration and donation to the TA Trust, transport to and from the trail, like my airplane tickets and things like that, and the dock hut passes. So all those were things that I bought before I started the trail and they're going to be different depending on your circumstances so that's why I didn't add them into the cost and there's a lot of numbers here I'm not going to uh, go through every single number but on this side here you can see it's the number of weeks so it was actually 11 and a half weeks on the North Island and then that was what uh, eight and a half weeks on the um, on the South Island so week 12 was half on the north and half on the south um, I've got them categorized into these categories here. So any kind of gear that I bought, and this was usually like replacement stuff that I had to get or items that I didn't think I needed, but actually ended up needing. Uh, food resupply, obviously, you know, for what you carry in the backpack, uh, my lodging, whether that be uh, a campground, a hotel, Airbnb, backpackers, whatever. Transportation, so this would include uh, ferries, and uh, boat rides and things like that. Um, meals, this would be the food that I bought in town. So not stuff that I carry, but different meals. Like if, if I bought a pie somewhere along the way, that was part of this meals category. Extra was uh, laundry, health, showers, and tours. So like there was a tour somewhere along in here where I went to uh, the treaty grounds. So that would have been included in that, but also laundry. If I had to buy any kind of items for health or, you know, something along that line that was in this category. So there are a few highlights here in the North Island. Um, this was a big week here. That's when I, the week after the river crossing. So I had to buy a hat and a trekking pole. Um, lodging, there's a big week here, but that's when I was, uh, my wife came in, in uh, Hamilton. We got an Airbnb for a few nights there. Transportation is a big one here, but that's at Terminui and uh, the bike hire, so two big expenditures in one week. That was a big size there. Uh, $88, that was the ferry to the South Island. And the, 88, the $80 up here, that was for transport to the beginning of the trail. Um, and then uh, here, $80, that was the postage of resupply boxes to the South Island. So uh, you can see that the biggest, and I got this over here, um, a bit, biggest expenditure in North Island was lodging. Uh, followed by meals and then by food resupply. So I spent $5,906 on the North Island and uh, 4700 or almost 4800 on the South Island. So people would think, oh, it's more expensive on the North Island. We well, spend more money. But if you notice here, I spent an average of $513 per week on the North Island, an average of $564 on the South Island. So um, weekly is more expensive on the South Island, but you're going to spend less money on the North on, on the South Island because the North Island you're on there longer. Total cost was $10,704. It's an average of $535 a week. Let me highlight a few more things on the South Island. Then I'll give you some thoughts about my expenditures. So um, this is a big expenditure. Um, that's when I basically had to replace my water filter. So that was the biggest expense of that part there. Um, this number here where I actually spent that money up here in the North Island, but uh, it was for the food on the South Island. So I brought that money down. So three resupply boxes, that was the Richmond's, 
um, and St. Arnold and um, Arthur's Pass. Um, and then for transportation, that was uh, the fee to get to uh, Queen Charlotte and also to pay the Queen Charlotte fee, but bought them at the same time, so I included that in the same cost. Um, and this is for the bike to Twizel, $92 for bike to Twizel. And all, the other money would have been shuttle money around the, the lakes. Okay, so you can see on the South Island, the big expenditure again was still lodging, but uh, the meals in town were a little bit closer and uh, the food resupply. So those are going to be the big three all the time. Uh, when I come down here, this is the total I spent for the entire time on the TA. So lodging is 33%, um, meals in town 24%, and food resupply 20%. Um, now, $10,704 is not bad. Uh, they were telling us about $14,000. So I think I did pretty well with that I expense there. You could save even more money here. Like I spent, uh, you're gonna see in just a moment, we get up here to the lodging, that um, I spent a lot of time in backpackers and Airbnbs where there were tent options as well. So if you're on a smaller budget, you can save a lot of money by just doing the, um, by tenting. And then also the meals. Um, I spent a lot of money. When I get into town, I mean, you can go cheaper out, but I was looking for burgers and pizzas and, you know, pies and all kinds of stuff. But if you're on a tighter budget, that's another area where you could save a lot of money. Transportation, yeah, if you didn't want to ride the bikes, if you wanted to walk, you could save 170 bucks. The 290 of the canoes, if you just do part of the canoe and walk the rest of the way, you could save money there. You're gonna to have to spend that money to get across to the South Island. You're gonna to have to spend that money to get up to the beginning of Queen Charlotte. You don't have to spend $92 for the bike. So there, there are some places even on transportation you could save money. Um, so, yeah, um, I mean, if you're a tighter budget, you can certainly do it for under $10,000. I have every confidence that you could be able to do that. So that is the, the expenses that I had. Um, I do have that on a spreadsheet. So if you're interested and want to get a detailed copy of that, just let me know and I can get that to you. All right, let's go to the second sheet here. And this is lodging. This is what I, uh, what, what I stayed in uh, from the 12th of October to the 6th of March. So again, same breakdown, North Island and South Island. And if you come over here, you can see that the tent was the, by far the, the most common uh, place that I stayed in on the North Island, 40%, 33% in backpackers and Trail Angels indoors. So there were some places I stayed at Trail Angels, but I was in my tent, so I put that under tent. But if the Trail Angel had an indoor uh, place that we stayed in, I included that in the backpackers. Uh, motels are other, so others were like here we stayed at a church three nights during a cyclone. Um, here was um, cowboy camping, Airbnb. I think the rest of these are Airbnb or motels down along the way here. Um, so North Island, you can see, you know, those two were the biggest. When you get to South Island, you, you start hitting the hut system, and obviously there, you know, you, you've got a lot of huts. So the huts moved up to 41%, uh, tent dropped down to 25%, backpackers 26%, and then motel and others 8%. So a whole lot more here on the uh, South Island in the huts. And if you see the total breakdown, um, it's pretty even. Tent was still, you know, 47 nights in the tent, um, 32 nights in the, um, in, the, in the huts and then 42 nights in backpackers or indoors. So those two were the biggest, and then 14% um, or well, 20 nights in the um, um, in others, like motels and Airbnbs. So you know, it certainly helps to make certain that you're comfortable sleeping in your tent. Um, I have a one-man tent that was just too small. Um, I can do it one night or two night, but Knowing that I'd be in the tent for quite a bit, I wanted a bigger tent, so I got a two-man tent, and I'm glad I had that two-man tent. Um, we were supposed to have a warm and dry summer, and it did end up on the South Island being a little bit drier, but not as dry as what they're predicting. So if you look here on the North Island, we had 63% of the days, um, 50 days out of 80 were rain-free but we had 30 days of rain, which is a pretty significant amount. And if you look, the bulk of the rain were in the first half of the North Island, which is a wetter part of the country. 
So we had a two day cyclone up here. We had, um, <laughs> that was the estuary day. It was a terrible rainy day walking along the beach and across the estuary. It was a horrible day. Uh, through the Auckland section and the Hamilton section, we had quite a bit of rain, so that was kind of nice. But once we got to the bottom half of, this, of the North Island, we didn't have as much rain. And then when you get to the South Island, we had um, 48 days of no rain and 13 days of rain. So you can see we really had fortunate time through the Richmonds. We had no rain at all, which I'm really happy for that. Um, we had like one night there was some rain, but it didn't affect us. So if, if we were in a hut already, um, and already set up and the rain didn't affect us. I didn't count it as a rain day, but if we had to put a raincoat on or um, you know, it rain us while we're setting up our tents or something like that, then I would classify that as a rain day. So um, bottom line, 70% of our trail was no rain, 30% was rain. I don't know how that stacks up in other years. Uh, I do know though that typically the North Island, especially the first half, you're gonna have uh, wetter days. So just be prepared for that. And then this last one is kind of the goofy one. I really didn't, um, you know, expect to be this as a, as a statistic, but I thought it was kind of interesting because I took a whole lot more showers than I thought I was going to. It's like the first week you walk in um, 90 mile beach and your second night, your, your second and third night, you're getting showers. So I was pretty surprised with that. Uh, you can see in the North Island, um, there were 59% of the nights I was able to get a shower, only 41% not a shower. On the South Island, that reversed, obviously, because you're in more remote areas. So uh, almost a, a third of the South Island, I was not uh, I was taking a shower with two thirds not taking a shower. But you, if you look overall, it was pretty close whether I was able to take a shower or not take a shower. So if you're a cleanliness person, um, you know, there, there are some it's not as bad as what you might think. I think the longest stretches I went on the North Island, uh, yeah, the Tatarua area is five nights with no showers that week. Um, and the Richmond's obviously have six nights with no shower. Uh, Yo, five nights with no shower. So, you know, in, in that those first, those three weeks there, you got the Richmond's, you got the Wyo, you got after Arthur's Pass. So that's pretty remote area. Once you get here, you start getting more back into some towns and villages. But yeah, so, you know, it's it's not as dirty a trail as you might think it would be. You you actually get, do get to stay pretty clean. All right, so that's my statistics. Again, if you have uh, any questions about this, feel free to leave some questions in a comment. If you'd like a copy of this spreadsheet, just let me know and I'll figure out a way to get that to you. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, uh, I think that's it for this video, and uh, we'll see what comes up next.